Welcome back to the Roll Up High Roller community. As always, nothing on the Roll Up is to be construed as financial advice. We are just some educators in the DeFi space. Toss us a quick like, give us a share, a repost, send it to a friend who may want to watch this. And finally, give us a sub or a follow. It means the world to help support credibly neutral educational content in DeFi. We're here to educate, empower, and enrich you. And let's jump in. We're on Mods of the Day. We got Jay Cole in the building. And um, we're talking about permissionless interoperability. And you had, you had a nice panel today, huh? It was a good time. It was, uh, it was fun. It's always fun to be talking about, uh, you know, what we're doing, what's happening in the ecosystem. And so I uh, just got to hand it to the movement guys for just, you know, putting on a world-class event. Yeah, it's been killer. I think probably one of the best events of the week, if not the best. Um, I was on a panel with Matt from Abarabs and Yerk from Hyperlane and Matt brought up an interesting part about modular security, which is like an interoperability. It's like this weakest link problem where in the checkered cross chain past, we've seen one chain, one execution environment destroy interoperability providers. How are you thinking about this? And like, how does Hyperlane evade this problem? Totally. It, it, it is so true, right? And if you even read like the early Vitalik writings on like his, his thinking between say cross chain and what he called multi-chain, like, this weakest link problem, it is unavoidable. It's kind of like uh, when it comes to blockchain, it's almost like a physical law. So how can you rectify it? Well, the way that we rectify it with Hyperlane is to say, well, everyone who integrates this thing, they should have the control around who do they want to connect with. So Hyperlane goes on all these chains. Anyone can deploy it anywhere, right? That's what permissionless interoperability means. But the fact that it is everywhere, should that mean that you should be connected with everywhere by default? Absolutely not, right? And so as the integrator with Hyperlane, you are saying, okay, so I see it on the, you know, these 50 something plus chains. I'm interested in these seven. And now that's how I limit it. And so the fact that the ability to connect is made incredibly easy, but then that it's not an obligation to connect silos the risk and lets you choose, well, I think this is the risk profile for me. Everyone's going to have different judgments around what that weakest link is. And they should be able to say, well, like, just because I use Hyperlane does not mean that I want my chain or my app to be able to, uh, to be, you know, tied in or caught up in the dirty laundry of all these other ones, just because they have Hyperlane too. And so, you know, in the technical terms, what actually happens is we have our like security modules. And when you integrate Hyperlane, you're choosing which ones you want to accept information from. And so that is where you basically draw the line. And you can say, you know what, this, okay, so the Hyperlane neighborhood has all these nice people, but I want, I want to be friends with these guys. I don't want to be friends with everybody else. Uh, and that's how we think about it. And all of that goes back to the core ideas of Hyperlane of like letting you do this on your own terms with your own sovereignty. And you're not just accepting everything that Hyperlane like, uh, ha, you know, you're not accepting connectivity from everywhere just because you wanted to use Hyperlane. Yeah, it's, that's the beauty of modular blockchains and crypto as a whole is just giving optionality. But I think specifically from the interoperability perspective, nobody's gonna opt into a system anymore where some chain that has a, a small validator set and a low cost of, of corruption to kind of nuke them, right? And so right. we want to avoid that situation. Um, and we want to get to this like end game where, and again, like York kind of touched on this a bit. I'm curious to hear your perspective. What is the, what is the modular blockchain interoperability end game? We've got maybe a hundred rollups now. Let's say we 10X that, 5X that. We've got all these app specific wear apps almost acting as like microservices for different users, all these applications. How do we pull this together using Hyperlane, using interoperability to make it a seamless experience and what, what's your vision here? Yeah, there are two, two ways that we should uh, talk about this end game. There's one which applies to everyone in the room, which is like, what does it mean from a user perspective? And right now, we all know kind of the morass that we're in, where you know, at best you're using a wallet like Rabi, which takes the extra step of displaying everything and you need to do a little bit less manual switching or you might be like us old geezers still using MetaMask, and that's a whole lot more manual. And so the end game for the user has to be one where like, I don't necessarily need to worry about 
managing uh, gas tokens on like these 30 different chains. I don't need to be aware of the switches, right? Like when you, you know, pull up your phone, I'm going to order an Uber sometime this evening. I don't know what fucking Amazon cluster I'm running on. I don't know if I'm like on AWS 7 West or if I'm on like GCP East 3. But in crypto, you do know that. Not only do you know that, you are, you are so aware of it, you have to have the correct tokens to pay that cloud cluster, basically. Mm -hmm. And so the end game for the user is one where the interoperability protocol abstracts that, takes care of that. And you know, you mentioned York. York is the one who built our interchain accounts feature, which lets basically a contract on one chain own contracts on many other chains. What does that mean in practice? Is that now your wallet could say, be situated on Ethereum, and then whenever you need to do something on one of these other rollups, just routes there. You're not like getting in the weeds of switching, doing all that. We do it for you. So that's the end game for the user. The end game for the developer is a little bit different, right? Because of course they care about what is extended to their user, but they also care about what is it like for me? What is it, you know, what does it mean to integrate the next rollup? If I am another rollup, how do I connect to the other ones? And so the phases on getting to that end game is so today, with Hyperlane, like you can use our CLI, you can uh, add it to your chain or to any other chain you want. I was just outside talking to a developer who was like, we want to build this like interchain lending protocol. But our biggest constraint is we want to be on these newer chains. And so like, how can we make sure that we're there? And so he's like, I heard your talk. And so sounds really interesting. Like this sounds exactly what we're looking for. So today, hey, use the CLI. Tomorrow, you know, not literally tomorrow, but as the next phase, it's, making that process even easier so that it based like integrating the next chain looks like no more than deploying another smart contract and how can we shorten the developer cycles for each one of those connections and at the end end game it basically is like hey hyperlay is already everywhere if i need to put it on you know if there's another rollup that just brought it up great it basically gets hyperlay out of the box and then for me is going back to what we just talked about before with the security aspect it's, okay, I want to be connected with rollups A, B, and C. I want to be connected with Solana. I want to be connected with Cosmos. And so now I send that one, like, contract interaction, that one function call that says, enroll these for me. And that actually, that part is actually already live today. But uh, the rest is what brings on that, like, developer end game of connectivity with other chains is, like, not too dissimilar from what it would be like as an app on Ethereum to, you know, compose with another app on Ethereum. I'm very excited for this interoperability future because I'll tell you what, I am tired of bridging. I'm not saying that bridging is going to be gone forever, but I'm tired of bridging. You and me both. You and yeah. me both. Well, thanks, John. Thanks, thanks for coming on.